Hi folks, welcome back. In the last video I showed you that you could use your body as a battery <clears throat> and you could tap into the battery by uh, using current collectors. And I demonstrated that different choices of, of metals uh, resulted in different voltages and amperages. And uh, then at the end of the, of the uh, video I showed some pictures of some uh, ancient Egyptian uh, jewelry artifacts and suggested that they may have been using uh, their jewelry and to uh, enhance their body's uh, electrical uh, field uh, and maybe even produce uh, power that way for whatever reasons they needed it for. But uh, so in this video what I'm going to do I've, uh, I've made a couple of wrist bracelets here one out of this is zinc and this one's copper and um, I also, in the last video, I showed that the, the, the ring shape uh, is, is important and it's important because it's actually a coil, you know. And so we're going to make some jewelry here, some practical jewelry, and then we're going to measure the results and, uh, and see what we got. So I'm going to start off here with this piece of zinc and I'm going to put it on my wrist like this. And then I'm going to take a, this is a piece of cotton felt, and I'm going to put that on there, wrap it around it, to make a, a separator, in essence. And then I'm going to take a rubber band, and I'm going to put it all around there to hold it together. Okay, so I've got a zinc on there and a piece of separator cloth. Now you can easily see that if they were wearing shirts, cotton shirts, you know, they're living in the desert where it's really hot and they're sweating and they would put this cotton, put their cotton shirt sleeve between these bands here and then they could uh, The sweat would provide water and electrolytes for connections, and you could produce uh, some power. So let me wrap this copper coil around here now, and we're going to make a little battery on my wrist. I can do this with one hand. All right, let me turn off the video, and I'll be back when I got it all together. All right, I'm back with a better way of making the uh, of making the uh, 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 bracelet uh, batteries. And what I did was I cut two more strips, another copper one and another uh, zinc one, and then I put them together. I've got a piece of wet uh, damp, I should say, uh, cotton between the uh, zinc and my skin, and then I've got another piece between the uh, copper and the zinc and then I've got them hooked up here uh, on both sides uh, this way I've got the, the, the positive hooked up over here and I got the negative hooked up on the zinc over here so whatever we measure here is going is going to be flowing through my body I popped off a clip here let me get that back on there all right so and you can see we're at uh, 0.73 almost 0.74 volts and let's see what we got flowing uh, through my body on this and we're on uh, alright so there's our micro amps alright let's short it out 3, 2, 1 and we have nothing I need to pop a oh I'm popping my uh, connector off here. Alright. One more time. I'll try to do this so I don't knock that off. Damn I've got my got a line, ready? Uh, three, two, one, we're at seventy one now. There's 72 again. 
Anyway, three, two, one. And we're at 30 point, well, we're about 30. All right, so we've got 30 microamps that way. And that's throwing through my body, and we're at uh, almost 0.7 volts. So we're 10 times higher in, in uh, body voltage, and we've now gone uh, from 10 milliamps was the biggest yesterday, or 10 microamps, now we're up to 30 microamps. All right, so now what I want to do is I want to test these in, in parallel and series and see and see how we do. So I'm going to hook up the... All right, it's hooked up. All right, so now we're at 73.3 volts or 0.73.3, and we're going to short it out. Three, two, one, and we have oh, we're over over 200 microamps. So now, damn it, I knocked it off again. All right, so now we're still 73, almost 7 there, 74. Now let's test it again around 200, there's the 2000 microamp setting now. Ready? And we have, so we're at uh, 2.8 or 20, 28, what is that? Ah, so we're at, uh, alright, so now let's hook it up in, in uh, series and see what we get. We're at 130, 1 1.3 volts, and now let's short it out. I had my terminals back around wrong. Ready? 1.3 volts, and see how many milliamps we get. Ready? 3, 2, 1. And, oh, we got 5. We got 5 milliamps. Alright? Yeah. Or no, 0.5. So we're 500. Uh, we're 0.5, so we're 500 um, microamps at 1.32 volts. So that's pretty good. And recharges real fast. Oops, we knocked everything loose. So uh, let me figure out what I can experiment with next on this, and I will be back. And I'm back. <coughs> now, what we did in this uh, video was basically I showed you how easy it is to make uh, battery bracelets uh, with just a couple of strips of uh, zinc and and uh, copper. And uh, and there's several ways you can you can hook these things up, like if you hook up the positive side of one of the uh, bracelets batteries to the to the positive side of your body on this side and then hook up the negative side of this bracelet to the negative side of the side of your body then you're going to hook all three your batteries are, are all going to be in, in uh, parallel okay and then of course you measure that down here now if, on the other hand if you take the negative side of one of the wrist uh, batteries and hook it up to the positive side of your body and and on this side hook up the positive side of the battery to the negative side of your body then you're going to have all three uh, batteries in series and, and so I, I obviously I haven't done that in this experiment here I actually had one one uh, wrist battery was in parallel and the other one was it was in series is what I had uh, tested tonight so I'm going to have to run these other ones and uh, and see how they do obviously and then uh, the next thing I want to or what I want to do soon maybe not next but uh, if you take a coil of wire copper wire and combine it with this uh, copper uh, band here basically what you've got is a transformer or the, the potential for a transformer anyway uh, it'd be like an air transformer, your arms going through here and the band would be a single turn primary and the wire would be a four turn uh, secondary 
and so it would be a four to one uh, a voltage increase uh, with this one right here that you would get your one turn primary four turn secondary and if you had one volt going into it you're going to get four volts uh, indu induced uh, through the wire on the other one so that right there would get would get up to one volt or to four volts by making this into a transformer and where I'm going with uh, with this eventually is that here's our biological and battery the combined biological and, and, and organic battery circuit right here and the obvious place to tap into these into this circuit right here is at the wrist because you've already got a positive and a negative right there to tap into okay and I'm thinking about using the jewel thief to do that because uh, they, they typically only draw 20 or 30 milliamps and uh, but uh, laser saber has got a jewel thief circuit that believe it or not will light an LED on two microamps not milliamps microamps I mean this is thousands of times less uh, current than a typical jewel thief is and so I, I started studying uh, jewel thieves and uh, most of your energy loss in uh, in a jewel thief is, is lost by the transistor you know the diodes and uh, and don't lose much energy it's the switch in there that's uh, it's most of, takes most of the energy uh, capacitor uh, will lose might bleed off some but it's nothing like the, what a transistor loss is so and one of the reasons that a, a jewel thief works so well is because it's a really high frequency these things will go for tens of thousands of, of uh, switching on and off uh, per second okay but there is an actually there is an easier way to do this uh, switching than, use, than using a transistor so you ought to be able to use a jewel thief circuit but but uh, uh, do it without uh, uh, using a transistor to get the high frequency and you can this thing called a tank oscillator right here it's just a capacitor and a coil okay so if you got your coil right here you just need to add a capacitor in this loop thing right here and now you get it and you makes a tank oscillator so you can get your you can get your uh, your switching uh, through that now the other thing that I found was there's this young kid who has modified a, a, a doubler or a mod or a multiplier circuit and what he's come up with is this multiplier right here it gets like 10 times uh, it's not a doubler don't just double the voltage this is like 10 times the voltage you got 16 volts out of a one and a 1.5 volt uh, uh, battery okay so and one of the inter another interesting thing about this is he used uh, it, it works like a, um, a bridge uh, diode or a bridge rectifier whatever they're called with the, which normally has four diodes in it and you can get AC and DC uh, off of those and he took out two two uh, diodes and put in two capacitors and this thing still works like a bridge rectifier you can get AC and DC off of this circuit too and of course it has no switches or anything so this is really efficient and uh, you might uh, the only energy you're going to lose from this is a little bit from the, if the capacitors bleed off some so anyway I want to combine these circuits right here and with jewel thief wiring and uh, and see if I can come up with a really simple yet uh, efficient uh, circuit that will power uh, power something with uh, very little uh, energy so anyway that's where I'm heading with this and uh, we'll see how it goes I'll be back as soon as I uh, come up with another uh, uh, something good to show you so I'll see you next time and thanks for watching